the fifth type of FRQ we're going to see is a particle on a line FRQ. Um, so typically with the Calc BC test, uh, these will be parametric equations, but parametric equations are not covered this year. Um, and so if you're going to see a question like this, it'll be, it will not be a parametric uh, type question. So we'll go through some, um, some particle on a line questions that are not parametric. All right, so let's do an overview. This is mostly going to be an overview of kinematics, some basic uh, equations. Uh, the first thing that we're going to cover is, I think this staircase is a good kind of reference point. Um, let's say we have the top of the staircase here, and we'll call this position. If I go down position, if I go down the staircase, um, every time I go down one step, we're taking the derivative. Um, so if I go down the staircase, if I take the derivative of position, I have velocity, and that is the first derivative of position, so velocity. And then if I go down the staircase again, um, we have the derivative of velocity, which is acceleration, which is the first derivative of velocity, and the second derivative with respect to time of position. So this is acceleration. Um, so I think this is a good just visual because the um, oops. when we go down the staircase we are taking the derivative when we go up the staircase we're taking the integral to get to each value okay so that's the first thing um, I want to point out second is the distinction between evaluating the distance a function has traveled versus the displacement um, so this is the equation for the distance you take the absolute value of the velocity and then integrate it from A to B. So this is the distance traveled from A to B. And the displacement traveled is just the normal integral without the absolute value. So this is displacement. Okay, fourth. Um, a Pretty typical question you're going to see is finding the specific position of a function. So if I want to find the position, and let's say we're given velocity, like the velocity function. If I am given the velocity function and I want to find the specific position, I take an initial condition or initial position, x of a, and then I integrate the function from a to some value t of the velocity. So this is like the starting point. Starting point. And then uh, this is the displacement traveled. So if you imagine we have a starting point and then we know the displacements traveled from the starting point that will allow us to determine what the, uh, the ending point would be. Okay, and then lastly, it's going to be the speed chart to determine the speed of a particle, uh, whether or not it's increasing or decreasing. It's a pretty common question you're going to see. So imagine we have a box here. And let's say on the top of the box is uh, velocity. Let's say we have a positive velocity and a negative velocity. And then on the side is acceleration positive acceleration, negative oops, acceleration. If the sign of the velocity and the acceleration are the same, the speed is increasing. So the speed is increasing. If the sign in the, of the velocity and the acceleration are different, the speed is decreasing. So it's going to be decreasing for both of these. Uh, both of these ones. If the sign of the velocity and the acceleration are both negative, this one's a little bit less intuitive, the speed is actually increasing here. Okay, and so that's the last uh, set of notes before we get into particle and line questions. So it's mostly just kinematics. Those are the main kind of concepts. Um, let's start with our first FRQ.
So uh, particle moves along the x-axis with a position at time t given by this function here, x of t for 0 is less than t, which is less than or equal to 2 pi. Let's determine when the particle is furthest to the left. Okay. That is another way of asking. We want to find the absolute minimum, we'll say, of x of t on the interval 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so uh, whenever we're determining the absolute uh, maximum or minimum, we have to take into consideration the endpoints. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to make a table. And the first thing I'm going to put in this table is here's a t value and here's the x of t value. And so we want to figure out which t value gives us an x of t value that's most negative. Um, so the first two points we're going to check are the endpoints, so 0 and 2 pi. So we're going, to, we're going to start this question by plugging in 0 into the function, as well as 2 pi. Okay, and here's our function right here. So if we plug in 0, we get e to the negative 0 sine of 0. Well, sine of 0 is just 0, so this becomes 0. Next, 2 pi. Well, if we plug in 2 pi, we get e to the negative 2 pi. It's going to be some irrational number. Uh, times sine of 2 pi. Well, sine of 2 pi is going to be 0 as well. So this one is also 0. So the two endpoints are both 0. Um, now what we need to do is determine what the, uh, the critical points are. Because if we're testing the absolute maximum or minimum, we need to determine the critical points uh, which will give us the relative max and relative min, and then compare those values with the endpoints. So to do that, we're going to take the original function, x of t, and what I'm going to do here is we're going to take the derivative of this function. I'll draw it over here. So x of t is our original function. Uh, that is defined as e to the negative t sine of t. Uh, now let's take the derivative of this. To take the derivative of this function, we need to use the product rule. Um, so let's take the derivative of the first function, e to the negative t. The, the negative will come down because of the chain rule. Sine of t plus e oops, to the negative t. Well, derivative of sine is cosine of t equals 0. Um, and so now we're just going to solve this for uh, t. We're going to figure out what t values satisfy this equation. This looks pretty complicated, but the nice thing about this is that um, the e to the negative t actually cancels. Um, and I'll show that by moving this first term to the other side. So this is e to the negative t cosine of t is equal to e to the negative t sine of t. Uh, so cosine of t. So these will cancel. So notice these will go away. So cosine of t is equal to sine of t. So what between 0 and 2 pi, what t values does cosine and sine have the same magnitude? Okay, so think unit circle. Uh, well, it's going to be at one of the 45 degrees. Uh, for them to have the same magnitude and sine, we're going to use positive 45 degrees. Uh, which we're going to represent in radians as pi over 4. Uh, and then in the third quadrant, 45 degrees more than the ref, uh, the uh, halfway around the unit circle, 180. So 45 plus 180, or in radians, 5 pi over 4. Uh, and these are going to be the two critical points that we're going to uh, evaluate here. So Let's, uh, let's take both of these and let's plug them into the original equation to determine which one has a smaller value uh, or more negative value, and that's going to be the answer for this question. So x of pi over 4 is going to be e to the negative pi over 4 sine 
of pi over 4, which is equal to e to the negative pi over 4. That's going to stay the same. Well, sine of pi over 4 is positive root 2 over 2. Okay, this term is going to be a positive number. This term is going to be a positive number. So this is going to be greater than 0. Um, and let me actually just write that over here. So up here, pi over 4 gives us a value of root 2 uh, divided by 2e to the, I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit, pi over 4 all in the denominator. And that's a positive value, so this is not going to be the absolute minimum. Okay, now let's plug in 5 pi over 4. So e to the negative 5 pi over 4, sine of 5 pi over 4. Well, 5 pi over 4 is going to be the same magnitude as we got when we plugged in pi over 4, except the sine value, the y value in the unit circle is negative. And so uh, this term is going to be negative root 2 over 2. So we end up with e to the negative 5 pi over 4 times negative root 2 over 2. Well, this is going to be positive. But this right here is negative, and so this term right here is going to be less than 0. So over here, if we plug in 5 pi over 4, we end up with negative root 2 over 2e to the pi over 4. And so this is going to be our answer for the first one. That's the minimum value of this function from 0 to 2 pi. OK, it's kind of a long question, but there's only two in this FRQ. So let's go through the second one. So find the value of the constant a for which x of t satisfies the following uh, differential equation. So a times double prime plus prime plus the original function. So the first thing we're going to do is let's take the, uh, let's take the derivative that we already calculated. And let's calculate the second derivative from it. Okay, uh, so the derivative is right here. I'm actually just going to rewrite this. I think it's going to be easier. Instead of using the product rule, notice if we were to take the derivative of this um, up here, we'd have to use the product rule twice. But if we, there's a way we can rewrite it, so we only have to use the product rule once. Um, so we're going to kind of use this in part B here. So part B, we're looking for this, x double prime, t times a plus x prime of t plus x of t equals 0. Um, sorry, I'm going to move this arrow. So let's move this. Let's find this. Well, let's rewrite the first derivative to find the second derivative. So the way I'm going to rewrite the first derivative is like this. We're going to factor out an e to the negative t, and then we're going to rearrange the cosine and the sine. So notice if we write it like this, this is just the, sec the first derivative rewritten. Um, when we're finding the second derivative, we only have to use the product rule once. It's just going to make it a little bit cleaner and easier to work with. So the second derivative is going to be equal to, using the product rule, e to the negative, or negative e to the negative t, times cosine of t minus sine of t. So that's the first term. Plus e to the negative t stays the same, and then we're going to take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. Negative sine of t, derivative of cosine, minus cosine of t. Okay, and now let's, uh, let's see if we can simplify this. I'm going to multiply these through. So negative e to the negative t cosine of t plus e to the negative t sine of t minus e to the negative t sine of t minus e to the negative t cosine of t. And so notice here that we have these terms will go away because they are opposite in sine, but these terms that's left, uh, we're going to end up with negative 2 e to the negative t cosine of t. Okay, so we're almost done here. Uh, so we're going to plug this into the differential equation here at the start of letter b. So we end up with a 
which is what we're solving for, times our second derivative, plus our first derivative, and then the original function over here. Whoa. Original function. Okay, now we just need to solve for a. So uh, we end up with negative 2a e to the negative t cosine of t plus e to the negative t cosine of t minus e to the negative t sine of t plus e to the negative t sine of t equals 0. Okay, let's see if we can simplify some things. Well, this will go away. These will go away. Um, and then let's just rewrite it real quick. And what's nice about this is the e to the negative t and the cosine of t will both go away. And so we can actually just rewrite this as negative 2a is plus 1 is equal to 0. And now let's solve this for a. So a will equal positive 1 half. And that is the answer for this second part of the FRQ. Okay, so kind of a long question, a lot of arithmetic. Uh, but here's the work for these two. Uh, let's wrap up this video by going through one more free response question. And here's the mark scheme for these two questions. So one more FRQ involving particle on a, particles on a line. So two particles now move along the x-axis. Uh, for x, or for t is between 0 and 6, the position of the particle is given as this function here. Um, this is particle p, whereas particle r is given by a separate function. Okay, so we have kind of two functions that we're dealing with. So let's start with letter a. So find the times during which particle r is moving to the right. So we're going to want to figure out the values of t where the value of the derivative of r is negative. So let's start by taking the function r and now let's take the derivative of this function and we're going to figure out the values of t that make the derivative 0 because when the derivative is 0 the function will be moving to the left. So just taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero, and now we're gonna solve for t by factoring. And then we're gonna use that number line technique that we've used before. So the two values are gonna be one and three. This is r prime. All right, so we're gonna plug in values of, the, values of uh, t into the derivative here. If we plug in zero, for example, this gives us a positive value. Two will give us a negative value. We're plugging them in here. Um, and then a value greater than three will be positive. And so the values of t that give us a negative value for the first derivative are, which means that the values of t that give us, uh, that give us a situation where the particle is moving to the left are going to be, actually we want to the right, looks like to the right, sorry. We want to figure out where it's moving to the right. And so the values of t are going to be where the first derivative is positive. And so that's going to be 0 to 1 and 3 to 6. Because we're actually, uh, we're bounded by these, these endpoints here. Okay. So let's determine when the two particles are moving in opposite directions. Uh, so we're going to have to make a number line chart for the second particle here. So let's start with just using this function p of t. And let's take the derivative of this function to determine when this function is moving left and when this function is moving right. So p of t. To do that, we're going to find p prime. So derivative of this function, we're going to be using the chain rule. The pi over 4 will come to the outside. The cosine switches to a negative sign. So negative pi over 2 sine 
of pi over 4 t. Okay, let's think about this for a second. Uh, the values of t that make this function equal to 0, that's what we're looking for here. Well, 0 will be one of them. Okay, and then the other one will be 4, because when we plug in 4 here, uh, we get sine of pi and sine of pi. The y value, 180 degrees in the unit circle, is equal to 0, and so uh, that will make sine of pi 0. So, same thing as before, except we're using a different function, just p prime instead of r prime. So let's go from 0 to 6 here again. Um, in this case, this one's a little bit easier because we're only dealing with one point. 4, and so we need to do is plug in uh, values into the first derivative to determine the sine here. Uh, if you do that, we'll end up with negative and positive. Okay, so the, the functions will be traveling in opposite directions when the signs are opposite. So they're going to be in opposite directions. Opposite. directions on the interval 0 to 1 because p prime is negative uh, r prime is positive and then the second interval is going to be uh, looks like 3 to 4 because p prime is negative and uh, r prime is going to be positive so 3 to 4 so this is the answer for letter A, and this is the answer for letter B. Okay, almost done. So let's determine the acceleration of particle P, and then determine if P is speeding up or slowing down at t equals 3. So we're going to find the acceleration of P at t equals 3. So we know P prime is equal to negative 2 sine of pi over 4 times x. So p double prime will be the acceleration of p. Uh, and so we're going to pull out a pi over, sorry, I read this wrong. This is the original function. So p prime is negative pi over 2 sine pi over 4 times t. So we're going to use the chain rule again to find p double prime. So it becomes negative pi squared over 8. Uh, well, the derivative here um, is going to be cosine pi over 4 times sine. Okay, so this is the second derivative, but we want to find the second derivative at uh, t equals 3, so we're going to plug in 3 in here for the second derivative. So negative pi over 2, pi squared over 8, rather, cosine of 3 pi over 4. Well, cosine of 3 pi over 4 is the x value. Um, over in quadrant 2 on the unit circle, and so that's going to be a negative value. And so this becomes negative pi squared over 8 times negative root 2 over 2. Well, the negatives will cancel out, and so the second derivative of particle p at t equals 3 is pi squared root 2 over 16. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question wants determine if the speed is increasing or decreasing, or neither. Um, and to do that, we're going to determine the sign of the first derivative. Because um, remember that speed chart at the beginning of the video, that will tell us whether or not the speed is increasing or decreasing from the value of the first and second derivative, or the velocity and the acceleration. So if we plug in 3 here, uh, we get negative pi over 2 sine of 3 pi over 4. Well, 
sine of 3 pi over 4 is going to be the y value over in the second quadrant. That's going to be a positive value. And so we end up with a negative times a positive. And so this is actually going to be negative. So this is greater than 0, and this is less than 0. And so we could say the particle is going to be slowing down. because uh, p double prime of 3 and p prime of 3 have opposite signs. OK, uh, let's wrap up this video by going through just the last question. So I think it's pretty short. I'll do it over here. So write but do not, do not evaluate an expression that gives us the average distance between particle, uh, between the two particles. This is letter D. Well, let's start with just an expression that gives you the distance between the two particles. Um, the order doesn't matter here, but we can do P of T minus R of T, absolute value. This is the distance between the two particles. This is distance between P and R. And so what we want to do here is to determine the average distance between 1 and 3. Let's write it like this. We're going to do 1 over, we're going to use the average value function. 1 over 3 minus 1 from 1 to 3 of P of T minus, absolute value P of T minus R of T dt. And this is the answer right here. Don't need to, we don't need to evaluate it, just uh, determine what the integral expression uh, for this statement is, okay?